Hiya, and welcome back to Password. The game that teaches us that... The struggles never end for the ye for the yeen. The struggles never end for the yeen. And I don't mean struggles with life or death. No, no, that that's that's normal for an FVN protect for a furry visual novel protagonist. That is actually normal. What we're talking about his gay struggles, his struggles as a gay person. Ah. Uh. So anyways, let's just hop right in. Yeen and the bear. But, what's up? I shook my head staring at the drink in front of me as Roswell pulled up a chair beside me. I think I'm a bad boyfriend. What? I mean, potential boyfriend. I talked with Dean and, like, he told me about his ex, but that just made him sad. This is the first I'm hearing about it. Yeah, I thought that maybe he'd know what you were meant to do, but... I think he's just trying his best when I'm sitting, when I'm just sitting here pitying myself. Maybe, but how bad are we talking? About his ex, well, bad enough that I found out why he kept insisting that all the dates we had didn't count. Even so, I get the impression that he's trying his best, right? He occasionally comes across as completely tactless, tactless, bah. But he's trying at least. Yeah. Even though Dean was hurting, he was still trying, so why wasn't that coming as easily to me? Roswell pulled out his phone and placing it on the table. I'm not sure if this would help, but can I try? Sure. Turn on his phone and flick through some photos before settling on one and leaving the phone in clear view on the table. Haas, Orlando, Roswell, and I were all dressed up in costumes for a thing Haas put together. We were all smiling and I remember the day well. I remembered working hard on my costume for ages and we all looked good. It was a day that I remember being happy. When I look at this picture, I think of my friends. I think of people that made my life happy, even if we might not get to see each other every day. He scratched his head and sighed out, staying quiet as he leaned back in his chair. I guess what I'm trying to say is that these people in this photo, these are some of only some of the people that have your best interest at heart. We're all here for you if you want it. Thanks. My tone was hollow and I didn't even think to hide it. Instead, I just drank from the cup of cocoa that Roswell had given me. When I did, things felt a little better. The way the sweetness played on my tongue lifted my spirits, if only a little. There's no easy solution, Dave, but please don't forget you've got us, right? Okay. I set the empty mug in front of me and got up, suddenly exhausted. <laughs> Fucking rock! <right. laughs> well, maybe not deadlier, but certainly just as harmful. Hiya. You good? Sleep well, Dave. Yeah. When I snuck a look back at Ross while he flashed me a smile, if fleeting, as he was taking my mug into the kitchen. Cleaning up after myself wasn't a priority, but I was tired enough that I just wanted to try and sleep. Let whatever happens happen. That'd be fine, right? I'd back up if it got too bad so I could just stop, right? Those were the thoughts I fell asleep to, as quickly as it happened when I got back in bed. Are y'all right? Dean was looking at me concerned, but he didn't seem happy. Almost as if he were going through the motions. I'm alright. He nodded slowly, looking to Haas. Dean scratched his chin, he looked me over, raising an eyebrow. We'd been out yesterday for most of the day, but it wasn't like that. Alright. I half expected him to offer some company, given we were surrounded by woodland. But no such invitation came. And here is where we get attacked. I really liked Dean. If I knew what it was like to love someone, I'd feel more confident saying that I did. It was a different feeling than any of my other friends. Not in a bad way, but just different. How many of these dumb chapters do we have to go through? A lot. A lot. Just different. Was this what love was? That romantic sort of love you have for someone that you'd end up marrying someday, maybe? The thought made me smirk for a moment before remembering what had happened yesterday. Dean's ex, how it caused his sleeping problems. How we seem to think about it every day. 
Hearing him explain what had happened made me feel closer to him, but also further apart. I liked when we got when we went out to get food or go out and see something. It was almost like hanging out with a friend, but I assumed that because he'd asked me out. I think we owe each other apologies, Dean. Shaking my head, I continued down the driveway as I thought. Had we been leading each other on? Were we both even ready to date someone? What I wanted now more than anything was to just talk to Dean and figure out where things sat between us. Oh, fuck. Like, 25. And we're on day 12. I flashed to Dean a wry smile, so used to him calling me handsome that him saying my name felt foreign in the moment. Oh, I guess we didn't get attacked. Dean fidgeted a little, looking across to Tyson as if waiting for him to start talking. When he didn't, he nudged him with his elbow. What? I thought you were going to ask. Fuck off, you were the one that was worried. Uh, so far no one. Dean carefully reached out for my hands, taking them carefully in his as he rubbed the back of them with his thumbs. I'm sorry, Dave. He squeezed my hands briefly, flashing me a quick smile before easing away. He scratched his chest, thinking something over. It almost looked like he was about to say something more, but whatever it was, he decided against it. Even after yesterday? What happened yesterday? I, uh, told Dave about my last relationship. The fuck? How's that going to be helpful? Hey, I need to talk about stuff too, and if we're going to be together, well, he needs to know. I'm sorry, Dean. For what? For, um, asking about things. No, it's alright. You need it to know eventually. I'm sorry I kept it from you for so long. Can you just kiss and make up already? Neither of us moved, although we seemed to fidget together looking anywhere other than each other. I'm not going to reread the chocolate cake scene. I love it, but I'm not going to reread it. Granted, with how often our hands touched, I assumed that maybe it was a date right up until he told me it wasn't one. Another one of those infamous non-dates we were prone to going on. I knew it was wrong. I knew that there were dangers in the forest given the first time Dean had taken me out here. I could get lost and end up, and end up like Roswell. Great, now I'm acting like Orlando. Thanks, pup. Eventually, I hit the river Dean had taken me to. Whether I was walking for the better part of an hour or longer to get there, I couldn't say. Sound of the water was enough of a guide for where I was headed. And worst case scenario, Dean would know where to find me. And we get attacked. Yay! Yas. There you go. Hi, you clueless bitch! Yeah, there would be chanterelles or jack-o'-lanterns, and I was fairly certain I could tell them apart. But if they were some other third thing, I wouldn't know, and and didn't want to make my situation all the more worse. Honestly, if Tyson says Yas, yeah, it's it's another it's another tennis ace. I looked to Dean and he was staring, shaking and scared. His eyes were locked on me and I knew why given what I asked him almost a week ago. At this point, we're only doing this for the true ending. That's about it. We're only doing this for the true ending. Because 
Path A is the only important path. But hopefully there would be someone else, all things considered. I didn't expect that he would be the first person I'd think of immediately. As much as it made sense in retrospect. I could hear him humming happily to himself as he seemed to just fade into existence by the stove. Morning, honeybee. It was corny, but I liked it. Something about how most of Dean's mannerisms just seemed to line up with the stereotypical, normal romance, and it was something I found comforting. With a mom working most of the time as a trauma surgeon and a dad who was out and about at odd hours keeping the world safe, Dean just seemed consistent. Hey, Dean. It seemed like he was doing something on the stove. Breakfast, maybe. Sleep all right, handsome? I'm still sleeping, aren't I? You tell me. Well, why are you making breakfast? Who are you making breakfast for? You're hungry, aren't you? Been a while since you've ha had a decent meal, as far as I can tell. I had leftovers. Maybe you're still hungry. Not as if you told anyone that you've eaten, either. I guess that's fair. A coy smile found its way onto my face, thinking far ahead to a time where Dean and I would share our own home. Ah. Uh. Would mornings be like this, cooking each other breakfast and sharing a pot of coffee? Would it be spent lazily in bed before we just eat cereal? What are you thinking about? Just how it would be nice if we ended up together, I think. Love me that much already? The question made me stop with a frown, thinking it over. Couldn't really love Dean already, could I? If I did, was that a problem? I don't know. Ah. You think I'll love you back? Maybe. It's something that we can talk about when I'm awake. He approached me carefully so that his face was right up near mine, voice lower to an intimate whisper. I think I'd like that. Yeah, that's about it. We're just trying to get to this, to the true end. Slowly, I turned to Dean, who so far had barely said a word. His eyes were focused on his coffee, and he seemed tired, maybe sad. It was hard to tell. Dave, throw us a bone here, would you? A bone, huh? Oh, for fuck's sake, Hoss! Hoss continued to razz Tyson, distracting him from asking me further on the matter, but Sal seemed to notice where my attention was and cleared his throat. Dean. Hmm? What's wrong? Dave wants to ask you something. I do? He does? With a sigh, Sal shook his head. His attention went immediately trying to corral Tyson and Haas before they started doing something, but my attention was still on Dean. You were just being quiet. Was that? Well, sorry, just waking up, I suppose. I heard something about a moving out, though. Don't know what's happening with that, but, uh... I searched his face for a clue to how he was feeling, but couldn't find anything. Plus, I wanted to talk... Plus, anything I wanted to talk about, I didn't want to bring up in front of the others, so I dropped it. Well, we're on the route where only Roswell dies, although that doesn't help. I guess if you're free later, I wouldn't mind hanging out. Oh, uh, sure. I guess I'll come find you later if nothing's going on. He flashed me a quick smile before focusing back on his coffee and drinking deep. I watched him for a little bit longer, but he seemed out of it, and maybe he was just waiting for some French toast like I was. Doing okay? His voice was quiet, almost like a comforting whisper as he stayed back closer to the railing of the stairs. When I turned to look at him, he was still wearing the same look he had at breakfast. I just keep thinking about what might happen if I go outside. Did you want to go outside? I rubbed my arm as I wandered closer to him, shaking my head. I don't think so. Well, that's fine, rat. What if you wanted to go outside? If we're being honest, I'm having about I'm having second thoughts about leaving the house too. As much as I'd like to spend some time in the greenhouse, it's just not worth the risk right now. Right. So what are you going to be doing instead? Considering going back to bed, maybe just lounge around and read a book, maybe go downstairs to the gym? You work out? What? You don't think I just lounge about all day every day, do you? Well, no, but I just assumed that like you were kinda like me. Try having Sal as a best friend and see how often you get pressured into going to the gym. Try having Hoss as a friend and how often you're told to eat healthier. I can only imagine. Dean's chuck Dean chuckling was contagious, and I found myself doing the same, but without as much gusto. So, uh, I don't know if you'd be interested, but would you perhaps like to do whatever together? Oh, whatever, huh? Have a preference for either of them? 
You're asking me to pick between going to the gym or lounging around in bed. That's not really a hard choice. So, to the jam? It got another chuckle out of me, and he threw an arm around my shoulder before we started to head upstairs. Although, uh, while I'm happy to just lounge around, I don't know how entertaining I'm going to be. I'm kind of tired. Don't worry, I just want to be around you right now. Well, in that case, by all means, grab something to relax with, and I'll meet you in my room. We got to the top of the stairs and split off, Dean giving me a little wave before disappearing into his room. As for me, I wandered around my own looking for a book or something I could do quietly. This would have been a perfect time to do some painting or papercraft, but I, sub but I settled for grabbing my vacation journal. I knocked quietly before entering Dean's room, the smell of bear hitting me hard the moment I closed the door behind me. Not that it was a bad smell, just very earthy and unlike the honey scent I was used to. Dean? Hmm? All ready to relax? He just walked out of the bathroom, wiping his hands on his shirt already balled up in his hands before it quickly made its way to the floor. I think so. Um, what's wrong? Did I put on a shirt? I just figured that all things considered, I could just, uh... No, it's fine. If you wanted to strip down to your underwear, that'd be fine, too. Is that a request, or are you just trying to make me feel better? Well... With my journal tucked under my arm, I wandered over so I was closer, sizing him up. I've seen you naked already. Careful, Dave. You're making me nervous. Nah, I don't feel nervous. I like how you look. I put my journal down on the side table and sat down on the bed, looking Dean over giddy. Maybe I just really like bears. Maybe I just really like you. You charmer, before you know it, you'll have me at a loss for words. Is that bad? I've mostly just been trying to be more... Uh... My words failed me and the smile faded from my face as I rocked gently back and forth on the spot. Dean noticed and made his way over to the bed quietly, lifting me by the chin to look him in the eye. You're doing fine, Dave. You have to be more or less of anything. You don't need to change for anyone but yourself. Really? Of course. Came from the mouth of someone who could literally transform if he wanted to. Just never did because he lacked himself the way he was. Huh, that sounds kind of bad. Like, what if you're a bad person? Are you saying you're a bad person, Dave? I think bad people wouldn't be the target audience for that piece of advice anyway. Listen, Dave, take pride in you. Love who you are, and then those that deserve that will just be around, right? The dream from last night flashed across my mind, making me gulp. The prospect of loving someone or being in love still frightened me a little. It seemed like something so easy to mess up. Are you sure you're doing all right? I'm not stressing you out, am I? No, it's not that. I'm just wondering things. Things we could talk about, hopefully. He sat down next to me, tr taking my hand in his and giving it a gentle squeeze. You're not going to be mad at me if we do, right? Why would I be mad, Dave? I don't know, I feel like I messed up the picnic we had. I feel like I've been bad at just us, you know? You didn't mess up the picnic. If anything, you took the leap that I was too afraid of taking by asking if we were properly dating or not. And are we? I don't really know. Was that a good question to be asking after yesterday? I don't know. I'm still just trying to figure out where things sit now that everything's just... I started to gesture with my hands, trying to find the words to describe the frustration and confusion I was feeling. Once more, I felt Dean's hand on my face and he shifted my attention back to him. I like how your eyes light up the way you do when you're excited. Or maybe not just when you're excited, but when your mind is going a mile a minute. You do? After yesterday, I've never seen them this bright. Now I'm not going to force myself on you as much as I'd like to just lay you back on this bed and kiss you sweetly. Why don't you? I like it when you kiss me. I like it when we get to cuddle. Hell, before everything started happening, I was thinking that maybe we could do, you know, do more, you know, stuff. And I'd like to do that too. But you're vulnerable, and I want you to like me for me, properly. Not just because I'm convenient. You're not convenient. He smirked, raising his eyebrows before I realized what I'd said. I mean, you're not, but, I mean, you are, but... Dave, breathe. It's all right. How about we just cuddle and I can read my book and you can do your thing and it and if stuff happens, then we'll take it from there. Okay, sorry. He leaned over and kissed me on the cheek before finding his book and sliding over the bed until he was sitting back against some pillows. I grabbed my journal and sat next to him, sighing out and resting my head on his shoulder. We spent a little while like that while Dean read a book on gardening from what I could tell. It looked like one of the ones from the museum. Stuff about mushrooms, I think. What are you reading? Just a book I find on the plant life around the mountain. Getting ideas on stuff I could grow in the greenhouse. He sighed out, setting the book down slightly as he stared off into space. Not that it's really an option now, huh? I'm sorry, I didn't mean for this to happen. Like I said, you have nothing to apologize for. It's not like you wanted this to happen, did you? Well, no, but vacation, right? 
not quite the same as getting rained out when you plan to go to the beach or blizzard when you want to go to the snow. But it's the same sort of thing in my books. But a vacation is meant to be fun. It was meant to be like one last nice thing before everyone just sort of left, right? But now all we have is just this idea that we're all in danger because of what happened. Well, I guess that's fair, but if I'm being honest, the nicest parts of this vacation so far have been hanging out in the hot tub and, well, that's about it, really. Nothing else? Yeah, I've enjoyed getting to spend some time with you for sure, but most of that's been, I won't say ruined, but it's close. Ruined? How? Did I do something? Nah, you didn't do anything. Most of the others, though, have been getting on my nerves. It's been stressing me out every now and again. What have they been doing? Well, maybe saying most was going a bit far, but I know Tyson and Orlando have both been very... What's the word? Annoying? Eager, maybe? Do you know if us dating is going well, trying to give me tips or advice on things you lack when, honestly, a lot of that's kind of stuff I'd rather find out from you or while doing stuff together. Same as I'd much rather you learn how I am by being around me rather than hearing f from, say, Sal. Speaking of, why do you like me? Aside from just liking how I look. Started off thinking you're cute, much like you'd be attracted to anyone, right? Right. And it quickly became clear that you were just someone nice. Someone that made me happy to be around and that seemed to lack me back with how quickly you took me up on hanging out. So you liked me because I was eager? Remember when we went to the mall to just look around one day? I remember us walking around and you getting excited when we walked past the art store. Remember how you wanted to go into the soap store so you could smell things? Well, yeah, but the stuff in there smells nice. Remember how excited you got while we were in there? How you wanted me to smell a bunch of different things and I had to drag you away from buying a bunch of candles? It was that passion and things that I adored. To the point that I wanted to share the same sort of things that get me excited with you as well. But that's just me being me, isn't it? Why does it need to be anything more than that? What if the sex stuff? What about it? I've only done that one thing with you and that's it, but you've had all this experience and I haven't, so... Like just the other day, I was thinking about wanting to do more do more like mouth stuff trust me i have been too i just think it's better to wait for now the flirting gets a rise out of you when it's cute but you're not in the right headspace to do anything at least i wouldn't feel right asking what if right now i gave you a blowjob what the fuck What? Were you just listening to what I said? Before uh, Dad died, I liked to think I was a normal sort of guy. Looked at porn, I was curious what it'd be like. What the fuck? You never thought to experiment with someone like Orlando and or Tyson? Both of them seem like they would have been keen. Tyson's not into me that way, I don't think. Well, I'm fairly sure given he sees me like a brother. And Orlando, uh, I don't, I didn't think I'd be, I would be his type. I never really talked about guys we liked. Well, I can't say much about Orlando aside from him being very invested in us working out. But Tyson, well. How he looks at you is very familiar. Ow. Fucking back. Just cracked it. It felt amazing. It's very familiar. Because you have a brother? Because while I was trying to figure out if I lacked my ex enough to say I loved him, he was sort of like a brother. Threw me for a loop to find out Tanuki's hibernate too. They do? I didn't believe it at first, either. Follow question. What's a tanuki? Uh, like dogs, I think, or foxes. Never really thought about it, but I guess they're kind of like hyenas and that they're their own thing. Tanukis are raccoon dogs. I'm pretty sure. Just look at Tom Nook. Wait, 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 wait. I just realized. Palm Poco by Studio Ghibli is a movie about tanukis. If you're curious about what a tanuki is, watch Palm Poco by Studio Ghibli. The only thing you have to worry about is that there's balls everywhere. It's a children's movie, and yet there are balls. I don't know how to explain it, but they're just there. I think it's like Japanese folklore. 
freaking loved watching that movie. So good. Loved it. Huh, that sounds familiar somehow, but maybe I'm just imagining it. Oh, well apparently they can shapeshift too, so maybe you met one in disguise? That's it. Maybe? I guess I need to meet one to be sure. Wait, nope, more importantly, you think Tyson might like me that way? What, suddenly not into me knowing he might like you too? That's not what I'm saying, just curious about it, I suppose. I chuckled nervously while Dean rumbled in amusement. I could feel it vibrating through his chest, almost as if he were purring. Oh, you missed how we were talking about testicles. Is that why you like me too? Because I sleep a lot? Who doesn't love a lazy morning in bed or a nice long nap? Sure, if you wanted to stay in bed, I could be convinced to get up and make you some scrambled eggs if you give me enough incentive. What kind of incentive? Oh, I'm sure you could think of something handsome. Go, 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 3,000. He shuffled down on <laughs> He shuffled down on bed, bringing his face near mine. His voice was kept low, that playful smile on his face spreading to my face, too. Just being close like this was nice. It felt sweet and a touch familiar to how Dean and I normally interacted. Dean? Yes, Dave? Do we want to kiss him or thank him? Do we want to give him a kiss kiss or... Big ass, big tits and even huge dicks. <laughs> Damn it! Ah. I'm gonna save. Wow, can't do that. I assumed him lowering himself down to this level was for one reason. And I decided to take the opportunity before he could act on it. Pressing forward, I let my nose touch his, breathing out softly against his maw before kissing him gently. I didn't know if I was doing a good job at first, given he stayed completely still. Up until he placed a hand tenderly on my cheek and took control. I melted against him as he pressed his muzzle to mine. It felt nice to be loved like this, or at least that's what I was describing it as. When we broke away, I cuddled into the crook of his neck and he sat his book aside to cradle me and we shared a nap. When I awoke, I didn't know what time it was, but there was a noticeable... There was a notable absence of Dean. Dean? He stepped out of the bathroom in his swimming gear and my heart sank. What's wrong? You're going outside? Oh, no, not at all. I just figured that maybe it'd be alright to go work out downstairs. Got a, figure main got a figure to maintain. While he was talking, he made his way closer to the bed, and I swung my legs around to sit on the edge. What figure? That round bear belly of yours, or... Within re with him in reach, I prodded his belly. Not as soft as I expected, but I kind of liked that. It was a trade in Orlando that he was conscious of, but it didn't bother me any. I was going to work my arms with some weights. Normally, I'd get by with just hauling pot and soil around or doing yard work, but can't do that at the moment. Oh, wow. This is the loose thing I could think of wearing at the moment, too. Or at least the first thing I thought of. Wait, so does that mean you're... Eyes dipped down as my hands found a place to rest on his hip. You could say if I'm going commando yourself, but I promise I'm wearing underwear underneath this. I chuckled again, pulling my hand away. But it was taken by Dean, who helped me to my feet as he stepped back. Come on, let's at least pretend for a little that we're being healthy, all things considered, right? I didn't bother to get changed, but he led the way out of the room with his hand in mind. Down to the gym we went, only to arrive to see that we weren't the only ones down in the gym. Dean's hips don't lie. Shakira, Shakira. One more, Rothwell. You've been saying one more for the last five minutes. God damn, Orlando is just like a band director. One more time equals five more times, and five more times equals you better clear your schedule for the next month, because you're not doing anything else. The treadmill isn't even running anymore. It is, too. You just focus on lifting that weight off the floor, and I'll focus on running. Neither of those things are going to happen. Oh, hey, Dave. Uh, been there long? How much is here? Not sure what we heard, but I heard something about a treadmill running in a weight and when neither of those things seem to be happening. Potato. <laughs> He's a potato. Ah, right. You wouldn't happen to know how some of the stuff works, would you? You know I worked at a gym for a bit, right? As a receptionist. It counts. Well, we can figure something out. First of all, let's maybe put that weight back on the sand, Grosswell, and figure out something more appropriate, yeah? 
every person in this room except Dean is a potato. Fucking right. Okay. Dean, killed in the greenhouse. Death cap. Time to speed run. Holds the potato like a yeen. Because he's a potato. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. It was a few months ago. It was a few months ago. Um, I'm sure you remember that cursed thing that I made and posted on X or Twitter. I don't fucking know what it is anymore. Yep, Rogo, bye-bye. You remember whenever Amethyst was talking about potato babies? <laughs> I made a potato baby. I'm sure you remember that. Back to the story. Back to the story. I was shaking when I entered his room, backing up awkwardly against the door as I took stock of what I was looking at. Uh, hey, you doing okay? His pants were barely off his ankles by the time I'd rushed over to him and hugged him around the middle, knocking him onto the bed. It's alright, everything's going to be okay, I promise. You can't promise that! Well, no, I guess I can't. But what I can do is offer to stick together tonight. Yeah, please don't kill me. Would that be alright? I didn't really think it'd be a problem, but after that, I just... His hand found the back of my head and started scratching really lightly into my scalp. Down the back of my neck to my shoulders. Of course it'd be alright. You just startled me by barging in like that. I'm just lucky that it was just you and not someone else about to walk in on me completely naked. You were about to strip down completely. Considered it, but probably wouldn't have all things considered. Oh, well, okay. You're not disappointed, are you? No, it's not that. I just don't know where my mind is at. I'm scared, tired, scared, and I don't know what's going to happen next. If that's all, I can help with that. In one motion, Dean flipped me around so I was on my back instead of on him. He stood beside the bed and stretched briefly before looking me over. What's going to happen next is we're going to cuddle up, and if you want to talk, we can, or if you want to sleep, we can do that too. What about... Hey... Under any other circumstances, I'd be saying we could go fooling around to go, but I'm a little worried too, so chances are I'm probably not going to perform so great. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Soon? We can try soon if you want. We just need to let stuff settle and we can set some time aside. Assuming everything turns out okay. Right, although I am going to say I'm liking this enthusiastic side of you more. Just need to remember that taking it slow is still my plan, right? Okay, okay, I get it. I yawned, rubbing my eyes, watching as Dean went to turn off the light. Now waiting for me to move, Dean shifted me so I was under the covers and got in next to me, rolling me over so I could use his chest as a pillow. Bare titty pillow. Sighing out, I listened to his heart beating in his chest. It was a steady thumping rhythmic and en enough to lull me closer and closer to sleep. Boob a pillow. Thanks, Dean. Sleep tight, Dave. No sooner had he said that, I was out like a light. I make a great pillow. Dean was still sleeping peacefully with his arm around my shoulder and my head resting against his chest. I cuddled against him again, sighing out. He was warm, fluffy, and soft. I felt safe here with his arms around me. Each of his breaths were gentle and gently shifted his chest underneath me, rocking me as if I were adrift at sea. Or at least that's what I imagined it'd be like. Worst of it was that I wasn't sure if what I felt was love or just some other emotion. 
Hiya. Or just, but the longer I lay he, there, the more I worried that now I had other, I had something I was at risk of losing it. Easing myself out of his grip, I swung my legs over the side of the bed and sat up to stretch and rub my face. Maybe a walk would do me some good, and after throwing on some clothes, I headed out of the room. What about this one? The one Dave, find Dave and I found at the river. In the river? If you mean the one out in the woods, I'm baffled as to why it was all the way out there. Okay, but which one was it? Pisces. So the one with the fishes that got found. So the one with the fishes got found in the river. Isn't that a little on the nose? Does it mean anything For bad? That's still wondering. They're technically called potato wedges, but apparently Jewel Osco, my work, calls them tater babies. I don't know why we didn't change them, but it's probably because KFC already had the name potato wedges. Um, okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Yuan. I'm sorry. Hiya. I'm sorry. Does it mean anything bad? I don't believe so. If anything, I would say it's a childish prank from someone that should have known better. I guess the important part is that we found it, right? If we never went out there, we probably never would have found this one. And for that, I'm thankful. Don't worry about your brother, Dave. Russell and I will keep him company while you and Dean partner up as usual. Yeah, I've read that in the wrong voice. Don't worry about your brother, Dave. Russell and I will keep him company while you and Dean partner up as usual. You will? Dude, I don't think I have any room to question my call on this after lobbing, after lobbing a spoon at Oswin. Not your smartest moment for sure. Fine. Although I want it clear that I'm fine with it regardless of you deciding it for us or not. Uh, great? As we all broke off, I followed Dean. After all, my as my partner, we had to stick together, right? What I didn't expect was for him to make a beeline towards the basement. Dean, why are we down here? His ears perked the moment I broke the silence and he turned to me slowly. Oh, I just figured we'd check the vault, right? Why? Well, we're looking for medals, it's been something you've been messed with, so maybe it give us a clue. Trust me. That thing won't give us anything other than showing me things I don't want to see. Have you ever been down here with someone when it happened? Anyone? I quickly shook my head. We could maybe try messing with that if you want. Might be better with someone to keep you safe rather than doing it all alone. Walking past Dean towards the door leading into the room, I peered in before closing the door to the vault. Closing the door to the vault closed. No, I, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, all right. Dean, can I be honest about something? Of course. Do you think things would have been better if we just didn't come on this vacation? How could they have been worse? Dave, we're being hunted and we almost lost you. Wait, what? Do you think things would have been better if we just didn't come on this vacation? How could they have been worse? Dean, we're being hunted and we almost lost you. I scratched my head before shaking it, thoughtful. Uh, uh, let's take us, for example. All right, though, I think we're doing fine, now at least. That's what I mean. Are we doing fine? Would we be if we never came here? Okay, okay, I get it. Dean sat down and rested back against one of the walls, running his hands through his fur. We're doing all right, aren't we? I sat down next to him and mimicked how he was sitting, looking out into the empty basement. I don't know. Maybe? Well, that's reassuring. No, I mean, we're good as friends. That much I know, right? Right, but you're wondering if we're good at something more than that, too. I guess. Think back to the picnic. You weren't sure if it was a date. I thought it was. How long were we just going to keep doing things like that without, you know, getting anywhere? You're right. That's probably one of the few things that this vacation did, has done right. Probably done more for Tyson than it has for any of us. And Hoss, although I guess that's still a Tyson thing. I know what you're getting at, and it's... Well, what did you want me to say? That I like you? That I'm bad at this? Nah, I don't think going over that's going to help anyone, Dean. Then... What? If we're, I mean, in danger. Right, so, so we're at the point of wondering if Dayton is even worth it if we could be dead tomorrow. I whined, hanging my head. I guess so, yeah. Maybe not as dire as that, but it's kind of like that. Well, what if we're not dead tomorrow? What do you mean? I'm not going to pretend that this is all, I don't know, fixed by saying that, but 
If we start by thinking that nothing's worth doing anymore because there's no point, then what's the point of anything? I like you. I'm not perfect. In fact, no one is. I would like to keep dating, but if you decide you don't want to because of everything going on, I completely understand. And if I did want to keep dating, I mean, then we'd take it one step at a time. Truth be told, I've been kind of planning something. What kind of something? Just something nice. Figured it might help lift the mood a little with everything bad going on. Okay, but what is it? It's a surprise. But no one's locked in yet. Taterine. Oh, okay. So, what did you say? I looked across to Dean, his smile contagious. I copied it and soon found myself snickering from how silly it all was. Okay, okay, sure. Lock it in. Great, you'll have fun, I promise. I'll have to talk to Orlando again just to make sure it's all good stale. Wait, Orlando's already in on it? For once, he and I had the same idea. I just bait him to the punch and he was all too eager to help out. This sounds like a recipe for disaster. It's not that bad, I promise. Wait, did I read that? Yeah. I settled back against the wall again and closed my eyes. Can I ask you something, actually? Of course, what's up? Sounds serious from your tone. Maybe a little, but not for the reasons you possibly think. What's troubling you, Dave? How are you so upbeat right now? Have you just forgotten how to be, you know, happy? Now, don't be silly. Of course you haven't forgotten. Times are rough for us now, and there's very little to actively be happy about. But in the off chance you have forgotten, it's at least something you can remember. What about you? How are you keeping it together? I have the blessing of not needing to worry about recovering from what you have to. What do you mean? Come on, Dave. You're dad. You have that to work through first, and when you do, the rest will come easy. Carefully, I opened my eyes and looked at Dean. I felt vulnerable having, I felt vulnerable having this part exposed for him. Here I was on the verge of tears again. But the moment I felt his hand squeezed mine, I whimpered and broke. A quiet, a quiet whine preceding tears. I'm just... I don't know what to do, Dean. I'm scared... No terrified about what's going to happen next what if we never get home what if one of you guys die what if it's my fault dive listen to yourself you're trying to carry the weight of all this alone but it's my responsibility is it i can use the vault who else is going to going to couldn't finish it instead whining again and realizing that my face was completely drenched dean moved his hand from mine and used it to, used it instead to put around my shoulders in a hug you can use the vault sure but the one person who you failed to take into consideration here is you. It- I don't matter. Oh god damn, we just got bitch smacked. I yelped as Dean suddenly smacked me across the face. Ow! What was that for? Don't you dare say you don't matter. Ever. Okay, fine. When you went wandering into the woods, you worried all of us. I'm not about to say I felt the most worried, but I, but I did feel hurt you go in there by yourself after what happened last time. He kind of did. You're right. I caught myself before I was going to sigh, frowning instead. Wait, Jack! Jack? Yeah, he was out there with us that day, in the woods. That thing you saw, that was him? It must be right, but if it was, why didn't he approach me then? Now there's a good question. What changed between the time we went out and when you went out by yourself? Anything you could think of? Nothing immediately comes to mind, at least nothing that involved him anyway. Well, alright, I guess something we should just keep in mind then. Still, I shouldn't have gone out there by myself. No, you shouldn't, but at least we can count our blessings that nothing worse happened. What happened was bad enough already. Yeah. We sat quietly for a bit before I leaned back into Dean. His arm slid from my shoulder down my back and I sighed out as I got comfortable. What are we going to do, Dean? What did you want to do? I don't really know. Part of me was so keen on doing more stuff in bed, you know, but I now I'm just, I don't know. What, not failing up to it? No, I probably would be if we got naked and just started kissing, but just... The thought of us being in that much danger has made the whole thing messed up in my head. Oh, that's not good. It's not bad, really, what maybe it is, I don't know. How about we start with what's messing with you and we can go from there? So, I tried to think of the best place to start, finding my hand on his thigh a reminder of just how little there was separating us. Clothing. That's it. Thought already making me heat up under my fur. Remember how Orlando seemed so disappointed after I told him that it was just a finger? <laughs> I must have blindsided Dean with a comment as he just snorted before rolling into a hearty chuckle. Oh, I do. Seemed a bit disappointed. There wasn't much more to the story to tell. So, I wonder if, like, does it count? Am I still a virgin still or not? Why does that bother me at all? Is it important to you? I don't even know. Sex is stupid. 
I'll have you know sex is great, but I get what you mean. Well, what's so great about it for you, I mean, Haya? What, you didn't feel great after what we did? Sure, I guess, but is that all? Is that all, he says. Dave, what I felt doing with doing that with you was more than just getting off. I like the close I like the closeness and the vulnerability that comes with it too. Being able to be that well bear with someone is a good sign of trust, I think. Bear as in you or bear as in, you know, why not both? My point is, for me I don't think I'd be able to just go hook up with some random person. It's all about trusting if I have it my way, just liking the other person first as a baseline. Oh, well, I guess for me, I always just assumed it'd be something boyfriends just did because, uh, this sounds stupid, but I guess porn? Porn is good, although, well, not always true to laugh. That said, my experience there really only goes as far as one other person, so... One more than me, at least. Well, how about when we get home, maybe... We can maybe look at doing it properly. Slow evening, a lot of lube, and you can set the pace. That could be a while, given everything that's going on. What? You're going to now say that you want to blow off some steam? I don't want to rule out the possibility. I groaned, rubbing my face. Now I feel dumb that only a few minutes ago you had me crying, and now we're talking about sex. You brought it up! I know, I know. Just, I liked what we did. It brought us closer together, and if I'm being honest, I'm glad my first time was with you. Don't scare me like that, Dave. Sorry, do you think maybe we jumped in a little bit too early with the sex stuff? I was curious about it before, but now all I really associate with you is, well, that. Oh, well, that's a problem. I know, but like, what else am I meant to think? If I took a leaf from your... <laughs> if I took a leaf from your book, I feel like I should go ask Orlando or Tyson if they wanted to have sex. That's really what you think about me? That I'm just some kind of sex crazed buyer? A little. Well, that's a bit hard to hear, but it's my fault. Don't get me wrong, I kind of like it, because with everything going on, it's the one thing that sticks out the most, you know? Well, so long as I'm more more than that to you, otherwise we can take sex right off the table until this gets sorted until this gets sorted out. How do you mean? I told you I both need and want more out of a relationship than just sex, and that goes for friendships too. I'm being honest, I like you in the same way I like Sal. Good friend, although it's a little different too. Because as I can see myself one day loving you completely. More than in some really close friend way. What the fuck did you say? I chuckled, rubbing my face again as I felt it heating up. That's, well, nice to hear. Are you feeling a little better about it, at least? Not the best way to get you to stop crying, but it worked. Yeah, I think so. I think I've got a better incentive now than just getting money or something. Well, I guess we better go find us some medals, then. He stood up and offered his hand out to me, and I took it to rise to my feet. Yeah, they aren't going to find themselves, and while we're here... Leading the way, I entered the room with the vault and stopped in front of the door. Dave, reckon one will be here? I wasn't looking for a medal, but something was telling me that I wanted to have a proper look at the room that had been causing me so much grief. Probably not, but... Running my hands over the wall, I thought back to when Roswell and I were here after the hedge maze, wondering if there was a compartment we overlooked or some other clue I'd missed. Dean had decided to poke at the input panel, but I didn't hear the telltale beep of an incorrect password being entered. What are you doing? Just thinking. About robots, or like, I guess, building machines, really. You're a gardener, though, right? And a woodsman! I told you how I could never figure out how to make the robots do what they do, but I could put something together, right? Right, but this is close to a computer, isn't it? That's what I'm trying to figure out, because, well, we're in the basement. Okay. You don't just... I had a basement, not without a lot of effort. I guess if you could afford a mansion, putting in a room underground wouldn't be too hard with enough money. Okay, but why do you think that's important? Easy, it's an old house. And this here is way more modern than some of the architecture. Meaning what? Well, I don't want to go pulling this panel off the wall, but uh, it's got me wondering just what it's connected to. Maybe I should ask someone. Benson did say not to damage the house when we got here, right? He did say that? Even if he didn't, it'd be a good idea. No sense breaking anything we don't have to. We're not that desperate. Not yet. Right, well, I don't think there's anything here that's going to help us, Gene. Want to try punching in some words and see what that, see where that gets you? I'd rather not. Not right now, anyway. Man, time to search somewhere else. Taking another look around the room, I tried to convince myself that there was nothing else of value to look at while we were here. Sure enough, there wasn't as far as I could tell. Yeah, I guess so. We continued on and searched some of the side rooms just to keep ourselves occupied. Dean didn't say much, and neither did I, at least until lunch. Then after, it was right back to searching. 
Although there were a lot more idle chatter. There was a lot more idle chatter to fill the space. And in our own little world, it almost felt like it was just another quiet day hanging out together. I turned off the light and sat down on the bed, rubbing my cheek from where Jean had struck me. Not that I enjoyed being hit, but the more that I thought about it, I... I did think I needed to be snapped out of it, although Dean's strength was probably more than he needed to use. While I don't like that I was on the receiving end, it was nice to know that in the worst case scenario, in the worst case situation, I could rely on Dean if we were in trouble. But his absence in the bed was another thing entirely, something that I wasn't sure if I was missing because of the situation or just because of how we saw one another. I plugged my phone in and sighed out into my pillow, thinking things over. Up the vacation where Dean and I had been, confusing. But it was nice to have no commitments, or rather have what we had be something unspoken. If I didn't have to worry about it, then great, right? But relationships were harder than I thought. It was more than just a casual friendship, and I wished that I'd clued in sooner as to how messed up our arrangement was. It wasn't beyond repair, but absolutely something to handle after some sleep. Okay, Thanatos. Thanatos. Ha ha ha! Ha Funny choke. Couldn't sleep. Something like that. Just stuff on my mind, I guess. But I'll work through it. Nothing major, though, I promise. Glad to hear that you're improving every day, though. Just remember to count on us if you're struggling. I'm not that bad, am I? With how worried we all were... W With how worried we all are about what's been happening, it's just nice to see you not all doom and gloom. Eating Thanat... Ha <laughs> Thanat... Thanatos eating Thanatoast with his Thanatoes. <laughs> What's wrong, Thanatos? Would you like a cheddar for dinner? Not all doom and gloom. Dean, come on, have some tact. What? I didn't mean anything bad about it. Maybe just find something to distract him from the bad stuff. Thanatos him out the fucking window. <laughs> Roswell grumbled to himself, shaking his head as the others came down to join us from the floor above. Ah! <laughs> Damn it, Thanatos, put your grippers away! <laughs> I guess I'll start with, who are we starting with? Orlando or... Derg or Woof Woof Bark Bark? Which gay one? They're both gay. All oh, these are just using my name. Are using my name? Use something better. Barks. I'm gonna go with the woof woof bark bark first. Tyson. I'm kind of worried what was upsetting him. Maybe something happened. Only one way to find out. The barking gay bitch. Okay, woof woof bark bark. Right, so where does that leave us? Next up would be the dragon, unless you feel like you've gotten everything you need from this already. No, I'd rather not take that chance and get everything I can in order. Oh, he's demisexual? Good for him. Suits me fine. I'll be listening in, but don't expect me to help interrogate him. Oh, he's demisexual, and I need to remember that? Okay. I'll keep that in mind. Well, I was just talking to Tyson, right? Didn't that seem odd to you? He was being a huge dirt complaining that the telephone was too loud. Yeah, that's that's about as much as I got before blacking out. I'm telling you, someone got up on the wrong side of bed this morning. I haven't seen him that bad in years, although I almost thought we were back in school. He was just as irritable at when I went to go talk to him. Almost seemed a little feral, you know, more than usual. What did you do? Nothing, just ask what was wrong, and he said he had a headache, then suggested he go and take a nap. Still, the less like a monster he is, the better, I think. Too much else to be stressed about lately to have him adding to the mix. He'll be fine, he's just my brother. Well, so long as we don't have any trouble with him, we should be fine. How likely is that, though, really? Orlando gestured back to his game, shaking his head. I have enough wolves to deal with my game without needing to worry about dealing with the real deal. 
With what I know of Tython, he's, well, volatile. He's not that bad, but maybe I just know how to deal with it. Anything that might apply to a video game? To be honest, I've tried little other things than, other than Silver. He's not a werewolf, he's just a, a good boy. Sometimes. Can you, I don't know, give him, give them chicken? Or brushing? I'm now reminded just how different in games tastes we have, Dave. Shaking his head with a sigh, he gestured wide towards the game he had paused on the screen. Orlando's over here fucking playing Doom Eternal. We're over here jamming out with Animal Crossing. Not too late to change that, though. Want to have a try? Could even try playing it multiplayer if you want. No, no, I should probably take a page from Tyson's book and go have a rest. If I blacked out before, maybe I should take it easy after all. So much for sticking together. You were fine by yourself. Mostly. What was that, pup? Okay, that's fair. Still, if you want to change your mind, you'll know where I'll be. Okay. Toes. I'm just gonna call you Toes now. I could do any number of things to make you worry without needing to make something up. Either way, our investigation is over now. Wait, no, I want to know how you can see the vault visions. Maybe I'll tell you. But not until we're done. You just said we were. We're not proper done until we put what we found out to the test. Downstairs. It's time for the vault. Already? We still have so much of the day left to go. And I have things I need to do. Already properly worried Benny Boy and Oz went enough being out. I already know what's in the vault, so do I have enough? Maybe a pep talk, but yeah, you've got everything you need. Oh, hi, Bacon. I genuinely think Dave fucking plays the Derg set it. And it's... I think he plays Animal Crossing. I genuinely think he plays Animal Crossing. Or started... No, Harvest Moon. Harvest Moon. Sure, okay, I'll bring you dinner and bait if that's what it'll take to get you to rest. Hi, good boy. He's a very good boy. <laughs> Dean manhandling toes. Dean was sitting next to me on my right, and after finishing his food, rested an arm over the back of my chair while he drank what was left of his cup. Of his coffee. Cup. That. As for me, I was worried. We had almost been here three weeks, and there was still no telling when we would go- when we could go home without the road the way it was. Ah, fuck. And, we're gonna leave off here tonight. Ah. Real quick before the ad plays, stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.